a podcast devoted to homebrews and meta breakers. This is the Cygnus Guide to Deck Building. This is going to be amazing! You love my new recipe. Are you ready for this? Put your faith in the light. Your mother was a burlock! Greetings, deck builders, and welcome to a special episode of the Cygnus Guide to Deck Building. I'm your host, Cygnus. You're listening to the podcast that's all about finding new, interesting, fun, and exciting, yet viable decks to play in Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft. Now, today's episode is going to be a little bit unusual, a little bit different. Uh, what I recently did was I've been doing some research on the forums, on the on the internet, and there are a lot of new players in the game, and a lot of them have questions about building their first decks and basic like crafting decisions to make when you have your new account. So what I did was this past week was I made a brand new account on the Asia server. It's the one uh, server I haven't yet made an account on. I got a, uh, one of my heroes up to level 10, and basically I'm going to give a little explanation about my philosophies and my uh, sort of uh, guide to how you properly make a new deck and a new just, you know, cards when you have a brand new account. So this episode will also be hopefully in video form on YouTube. I'm also recording uh, as we do this, and if you're watching this on YouTube already, well then, hey, it worked. Awesome. <laughs> so we're already one step ahead of the curve here. So today's uh, discussion and, and goal is basically to talk about budget decks. When you start a new account, obviously you don't start with a lot of cards. You don't start with very much stuff at all. And so you have very limited uh, options as far as what you can make with the dust and with the just allocation allocated resources that you actually have for making a new deck. So that's our goal is to make some budget decks that you can use to play in very, you know, simple, low ranks. Although I will say that some of these we make today and look at, it wouldn't surprise me if you could reach uh, rank 10 quite easily with some of these decks if you know what you're doing and know how to play the game correctly. So, first of all, what is your goal with limited cards? With limited cards, obviously you don't have all the options to make the most supreme decks you want, and unless you plan on paying a lot of real money into the game to open a lot of packs, it's going to be a long time until you start getting a good collection of legendaries, a good collection of the epic and more uh, rare spells and minions in the game. And to be honest, having a lot of options isn't going to be an option right now, to put it quite simply. I would say when you're first making your new decks, don't focus on trying to make a tribal deck unless it's something you really, really want to play and you know it's, it's something that you've got the good amount of dust for. If you try to make an all Murloc deck, for example, or try to make an all uh, like Totem Shaman deck, that's actually a little more viable, I guess, a Totem deck like an all beast druid or beast hunter deck it can be done but it's going to take a little more dust and a little more leeway a little more give and take with what you can actually make with that set of cards we're also going to uh, obviously not be doing any adventure cards so any cards that you may get from league of explorers or from black rock mountain you can't actually craft those cards uh as a as a clarification, if you already purchased the adventures with either gold or real money, you can disenchant those cards, but you can't actually uh, create them from just nothing, not having them before. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go through my process of playing, or not playing, but creating a new deck on a brand new account. As you can tell, looking here, if you're watching this in the video, uh, in my collection manager, I've got a good amount of cards already, but these are ones that were given to me basically for free by the game. I believe if you add up all the cards given for free, as far as things like, you know, just simply playing the game, you get a few packs for free. There's currently the Whispers of the Old Gods promotion still going on. You get things like, a, like one free arena pass, which by the way, my one free arena pass, I was playing under the assumption that let's say I was a brand new player. I literally made a deck and retired it immediately. All I got out of that was I think 25 dust and one pack from I believe old gods. I want to say I got an old gods pack. So total what we see here aside from the basic cards is I've leveled up a few classes already, some that are going to go into the decks we're going to make today because I've obviously already seen ahead some of the cards that I got from those packs. But we have basically the cards from six classic packs and 13 Whispers of the Old Gods packs. So here's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to first just simply, obviously, we're going to go to crafting. 
And we're going to get rid of any extra cards we have in our set. So I'm going to go over here to the Disenchant Extra Cards button for new players, a very important button. I would highly, highly encourage you, always, always dust stuff as soon as you can, unless you expect there to be a nerf of some kind of some or some other balance change to a card coming up, which as we've seen are pretty rare, and I wouldn't expect to see one anytime soon, considering the massive wave of nerfs that Blizzard just did to a lot of the cards in Hearthstone. So right here already, I've got 65 dust worth of disenchantable cards, which are extras, things I'll never actually use because I have too many of them. Let's go ahead and just get rid of those right away. And 65 dust for, for free cards. Oh, check it out. You also get crafting time achievement. Disenchanted card, 95 dust. I did not know that was a thing in the game. Look at that. So now we've got exactly, how much dust do we have now? We've got 90 dust in the game right now, which is which is pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to crafting, and there's a little search function you can use to help you find cards that you already have in the game. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna scan our class cards primarily, plus a few of our neutrals, and we're gonna see which classes are we best suited for based on what we got for free already in our packs. So what we're gonna do is under the crafting uh, set of cards, we're going to put in the search box owned, colon one to two and this will show every craftable card we have that we already own one or two copies of push enter and see what we got here so if you're listening to this in only the audio version i'll list these off for you as well but if you're listening or if you're watching on the video version of this you can simply scan these as we go so for the druid cards we've got a feral rage a mark of nature and a claxi amber weaver Two Meyer Keepers, Soul of the Forest, and two Dark Arakoas. Already, we've got some pretty good cards here that would promote making a nice uh, Cthulhu Druid, which is which is pretty solid. That's pretty good. On the Hunter side of things, two Fiery Bats, a Freezing Trap, a Carrion Grub, and oh man, two Savannah High Mains already. If you guys haven't played this card before, Savannah High Main, I highly encourage you. If you're interested in playing Hunter, this is a very very high crafting priority. Onto the mage. Mage, we kind of got a little bit of the short stick over here. We've got Ice Lance, Cult Sorcerer, uh, two copies of Shatter, a Sorcerer's Apprentice, Demented Frost Collar, and a Pyroblast. Lucky enough, I did get actually two epic cards throughout the whole set, which you'll see the other one here in a second. And Pyroblast, honestly, it's not, I think, a good enough card to really validate making a mage deck. So mage right now, I think with this sort of odd hodgepodge of cards, probably not very high on our list of being one of our first decks we're gonna make. Going over to the Paladin, ugh, we really did not get much in terms of Paladin cards for our free stuff. We've got two Divine Strengths, two Repentances, two A Light in the Darkness, one Argent Protector, and one Stand Against Darkness. Not exactly a stellar set of cards, which is strange because normally I actually suggest having mid-range Paladin be every player's or one of your, every player's first decks they make because there's a lot of great teaching stuff you can do with those decks. But with this setup we have right here, it would cost a lot of dust to make what I would consider to be a solid, typical mid-range Paladin deck. So we're probably not going to make any Paladin decks today, unfortunately. Onto the Priest ones, we got a Circle of Healing, we got a Forbidden Shaping, that's the other new uh, epic card I got, a Silence, a Lightwell, two Hooded Acolytes, Shadow Madness, Shadow Word Horror, Power Word Tentacles, two copies of Tentacles, and one Twilight Dark Mender. And so we've already got some good stuff here to make potentially a Cthulhu Priest. There's not a whole lot in regards to like really solid other cards for the Priest archetype, but we have some good stuff here. Unfortunately, we have a lot of kind of junk cards as well. But, you know, that's I would say that's in our maybe range right now. On to Rogue. we got three Rogue cards. Two Bladed Cultists and a Cold Blood. Yeah. I already don't advise making Rogue as one of your first decks. It's a deck that requires typically a whole lot of know-how and experience in the game to actually make a viable deck and to play it well. And based on this, hey, that's okay because we only got three Rogue cards. Chances are we're going to dust all of those here pretty soon. On the Shaman ones, we actually got a good amount of Shaman cards. We've got an Evolve, two copies of Forked Lightning, which we can make into Dust. We've got a Primal Fusion, a Stormcrack, a Feral Spirit, and a Flame Wreathed Faceless. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good set of cards there. It's not, not bad. Onto Warlock, we got one Warlock card in all of those 19 packs. We got one Darkshire Councilman. Now, Darkshire Councilman is one of the best cards from Whispers of the Old Gods, especially, you know, for the Warlock uh, Zoo archetype. 
but unfortunately we don't really have much else for this class right now, so probably not going to be something we, we craft anytime soon. On to Warrior. Hey, we got some good stuff in the Warrior class here. We got one Nazoth First Mate, one Slam, two Bloodsail Cultists, a Frothing Berserker, and two Ravaging Ghouls. A Tempo Warrior, based on this selection of cards we have here, is very likely going to be one of our first decks we make because, well, it's just a great setup of cards already. Look at this. We've got Pirate Synergy, we've got Damage Taking Synergy, we've got Slam. I mean, this is already taken off to be a great deck. You could make a really solid Tempo deck with even just these and some of the base cards. And then on to our neutrals. We've got actually a pretty good collection of neutrals here, some better than others, obviously. We got one Argent Squire, two Tentacles of Nazoth, two Dusk Boars, one Loot Hoarder, two Twisted Worgens, one Acolyte of Pain, two Amgam Ragers, also known as Free Dust, one Demolisher. We got a Jungle Panther, a Silithid Swarmer, a Squirming Tentacle, uh, two Aberrant Berserkers, which will go great in our Tempo Warrior deck. Uh, one Ancient Brewmaster, a Dread Corsair, two Evolved Kobolds, one Infested Tauren. We've got two Polluted Hoarders, two Occult Apothecaries, one Psychotron, one Corrupted Seer, two Nerbian Prophets, two Scarum Cultists, more for our Cthulhu decks. We got one Wind Fury Harpy, two Bog Creepers, and then we got one Doom Caller as well. These are also in addition to the free Cthulhu and the Twilight Beckoners you get just by simply playing the game during the, the Whispers of the Old Gods release uh, time frame. I'm not sure exactly when that time frame ends. If you're watching this sometime relatively close still to, to the month of May 2016, I, I'm guessing it'll still be going for a while, but I honestly have no idea. Obviously, the sooner you get into the game, the better. Then we're also going to look at our golden cards. For some reason, not all the craftable ones come up without the uh, show golden cards icon click. So we're going to click this button over here. We're going to see what golden cards we have. We got one unbound elemental for shaman. So hey, maybe we'll make a shaman deck sometime in the near future. We've got another Nazoth's first mate, a golden Nazoth's first mate, which is great because now we have two of those cards. And then for the neutrals, we got a Silithid Swarmer and a Scarum Cultist. This is actually quite nice because, as you likely know already, any golden card, if you disenchant it, you get the full dust for whatever that card's normal rarity is. So, for example, crafting a rare card, it gives or it costs 100 dust. But if you disenchant a rare card, I think you only get, is it 20 dust, I want to say? It's, uh, or, or 25 perhaps? No, it's, it's 20, 20 dust. And so if you disenchant a golden version though, you get 100 dust for that card right away. So let's start with doing some disenchanting. We already know we have two Scarum Cultists that are non-gold, so we can disenchant this guy right now. 100 gold, easiest thing I've ever done. And then Silithid Swarmer, that's a very niche card, one that's not going to see a lot of play in many decks. We can disenchant this one as well fairly easily. Goodbye, Swarmer. For the Shaman card, the Unbent Elemental, and for the Warrior card, these are actually ones that I would consider keeping right now simply because they are still free cards. And I don't think they're going to be on our bottom range of cards to look at right now. Okay. Uh, speaking of, of our bottom three range, what I do right now is I kind of organize my classes based on which of the three most likely classes I'll be able to play, which are the absolute bottom three, which I won't ever likely play anytime soon, and then what are kind of the middle range, like if I wanted to, I could, I could dabble in it a little bit. And I think usually, usually what I suggest is usually I say put... Uh, something like Mage, like a good spell casting deck, something like Paladin, a nice little mid-range deck, and then something like a Warrior or uh, a Priest, a nice control deck into your top three, so you have a little bit of variety. But unfortunately, with our setup, Paladin was one of the absolute worst ones, along with Warlock and Rogue. So our bottom three classes that we're not going to do anything with anytime soon are going to be Paladin, Warlock, and Rogue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead... And we're going to simply, let me reset my uh, search functions here. We are going to simply go back to our Warlock. We're going to get rid of Darkshire Councilman. Dust. We're going to go to the Rogue. We're going to get rid of our Bladed Cultists. We're going to get rid of Cold Blood. And then we're going to go to Paladin. We're going to toss a lot of these cards as well. We're going to get rid of Divine Strength. We're going to get rid of Repentance. We're going to get rid of A Light in the Darkness, both copies of those. 
We're going to keep Argent Protector simply because he's a good card when we do start playing Paladin someday, but we're also going to get rid of Stand Against Darkness with this one. Okay. And then we've also got, let's see, we've got Paladin, oh, it's already the three. So we've got Paladin, Warlock, and Rogue. Those ones we're going to dust and just turn into other stuff very soon. Let's look now and see if there's any other uh, really high dust-yielding cards, like Epics and Rares, that we can get rid of sometime soon. So we're going to first simply put in our search terms, Epic, this is going to bring up all of our Epic cards. I'm going to take off Crafting so we just see the ones that we have. And we've got two Epic cards right now, Pyroblast and Forbidden Shaping. Now... Here's the thing with, with epic cards, a lot of times they are very like kind of niche, very unusual cards, or they're very strong cards in the right deck. And unfortunately right now, both of these cards, Pyroblast and Forbidden Shaping, we're not going to have the appropriate tools to build a deck with either of these anytime soon. The only one I would consider keeping is Forbidden Shaping just to make a fun priest deck. But for sure, I'm going to get rid of Pyroblast because right now Mage is not going to be one of our high priority decks to build. And to be honest, Pyroblast is not that stellar of a card. You have to really build a deck around it and, and, and uh, uh, promote a lot of resources towards making a deck with Pyroblast in it. So for right now, we're just going to ignore the Pyroblast. Disenchant. For the other one, for our Forbidden Shaping, I'm going to keep it here for now because let's say I really enjoy this, this card. It's a cool concept, a cool gameplay mechanic, and so perhaps I want to just keep it in my collection so that when I do start playing Priest someday, I've got that cool card just as backup. If we need to, as we're building our decks here, maybe we can go through and take care of this guy and, and disenchant him. Just keep in mind we've got an extra 100 dust right here if we need it at any point. Okay? Let's look now at our rare cards and see what we can get rid of. For the Druid, we've got the Claxi Amber Weaver and two Meyer Keepers. These are both great cards, and I foresee us making a Cthulhu Druid sometime very soon. So we're going to hold on to all of those. For Hunter, Savannah High Mains, keeping those, obviously. For Mage, we've got two very niche cards. We've got the Cult Sorcerer and Demented Frostcaller. Demented Frostcaller in a beginner's deck, for sure, we're going to disenchant. So that's 20 dust for us right there from the Frost Collar. And for Cult Sorcerer, there's an argument to be made that you could keep this guy, but I think we've got bigger priorities on our hands, so we're going to toss him as well. Cult Sorcerer. For the Priest, Lightwell, we can get rid of that one. That's a very high synergy and, to be honest, a very low impact card. We're going to keep Shadow Madness because it's, it's a good tech card to keep in in case we have you know certain metas we see or just a fun card you want to keep in your deck. Shadow Word Horror terrible card unfortunately in case you uh missed my episode talking about that card not good so we're gonna disenchant that one as well and then we've also got twilight dark mender and this is one that i could go either way on we've got the tools to make a nice cthune priest deck as well so we're gonna hold on to the dark mender just for right now for shaman we've got evolve and feral spirit I think Evolve is worth keeping because we do have two copies of the Nerubian Prophet in our uh, collection already. And so making a fun Evolve Shaman deck might be something we look into a little bit later. So we're going to hold on to the Evolve and the Feral Spirit for the Shaman cards. For Warrior, that's another one we're probably going to keep on or hold on to. So Blood Cell Cultist and Frothing Berserker we're going to keep. Let's look at our neutrals now. We've got Demolisher, Silithid Swarmer, Corrupted Seer, Two Scarum Cultists, and a Doom Caller. Well, I can tell you right now for sure, Silithid Swarmer the non-golden version we have. You're going away. Corrupted Seer, you're going away. Too situational, too tough to fit into a deck, and I just don't think that they're what a beginning player needs in any regards. Demolisher, I think, is a, is a fine three-drop to keep. Obviously, there are better ones in the game, but I think we hold on to him for now just in case we don't get something better later. Scarum Cultist and Doomcaller are nice for our Cthulhu decks as well, so I think for right now we hold on to them, but I think Scarum Cultist might be getting the axe sometime soon. Now let's look at our common cards. We're going to look at simply cards that we can disenchant that are in the common uh, realm of the game. So for Druid, we've got a Mark of Nature, Soul of the Forest, two Dark Arakoas. I think since we're not going for any sort of token deck anytime soon, I think Soul of the Forest we can disenchant right now with no regrets. Mark of Nature, eh, we'll see. We'll hold on to that one for now. Dark Arakoas we're keeping, obviously. For the Hunter side of things, we've actually got a pretty good set here already of a few common cards, so I think we're going to hold on to these guys. And let me actually... To make this a little bit easier, let's go ahead and change common. Let's just simply go to owned one to two under the crafting. There we go, it's a little easier. 
For the mage, we've got Ice Lance, Shatters, and Sorcerer's Apprentice. We're going to toss Ice Lance to Situational. We're not making a Freeze Mage deck anytime soon. Very expensive deck to make. And then both copies of Shatter we're going to toss as well. Sorcerer's Apprentice is one of the best cards for Mage, so we're going to hold on to that one in case we make a Mage deck sometime in the near future. Paladin we've gone through already. Priest, we've got Circle of Healing. We've also got Silence. I honestly believe Silence is an okay card, but now we're going to toss it. We've also got two copies of Power Word Tentacles. Unfortunately, this card just does not have the right stuff to, to keep it into our, into our collection. So we're going to toss both copies of that. For the Shaman, Forked Lightning, unfortunately, is a far, far too overcosted card for the Overload. Just doesn't do enough. We're going to toss both copies of that. And then everything else here, since this is one of our considerations for a, for a deck to make, we're going to hold on to these other cards right here. For Warrior, Probably gonna make a warrior deck, so we're gonna hold on to all of those. Neutrals, here's where we got a few we can get rid of. Dusk Boar, we can definitely toss both copies of our Dusk Boar. We've got the Twisted Worgen. Whoops, not, not a glad of pain. Twisted Worgen, good card in Arena, but I think for Constructed, we have better ways to spend our card slots. Omgom Rager, get out of here. <laughs> we're gonna toss both copies of that immediately. Uh, let's see, Jungle Panther I think will might be fine for our, our beast mid-range hunter, hunter deck we're going to make here pretty soon. Squirming Tentacle, a decent card, but I think there are better cards to put into your 3 slot. Ancient Brewmaster, same thing. Toss him as well. Dread Corsair, he's a pirate. We're going to hold on to pirates because we might be making a pirate deck here pretty soon for our, for our warrior class. Evolved Kobold, unfortunately, not making the cut. We're going to toss both copies of that. Invested Torin cutting him without the proper synergy he's basically a worse version of chill wind yeti and a worse version of ascension shield master unfortunately we got two polluted hoarders which i actually kind of like this card it, it fills out your four slot nicely and it promotes card draw one of the best things you can do when you're making a new deck is you want to have things that promote card draw for new players having an empty hand is one of the most frustrating things you can have happen so typically most things that say draw a card you're going to want to hold on to because it will teach you about card management and how to properly adjust your deck for having too much or too little card draw Cult Apothecary, I think we can just keep one copy of this guy if we make a control deck anytime soon. Psychotron, same thing. That's a fair card. Nubian Prophet, since we might make our Evolve Shaman deck, we're going to hold on to those. Scarum Cultists, they're fine. Wind Fury Harpy, get rid of that card immediately. No one needs an overcosted Chill Wind Yeti. Bog Creeper is actually one of my absolute favorite cards in the new set for beginners. A 7 mana 6 8 taunt does some serious work in Arena. And in my few test uh, decks that I made to level up some of my heroes for this account, I put in both copies of these Bog Creepers in there. Fantastic card for nearly any, like, like anything, seriously, just any sort of, uh, of deck at all, whether it's aggro, mid range, control. If you're playing on a new budget deck, Bog Creeper is one of your favorites, one of your absolute highest crafting priorities. So speaking of crafting priorities, here are the things that I suggest now that every single player in the game should have in their collection. We're going to look at just basically the top commons and rares, no epics or legendaries, just the top commons and rares for, for overall neutrals. First one we're going to make, now we have, let's see, we got 770 dust over here, which is pretty solid. That's actually pretty good. We're halfway to one legendary, if that makes you know any relative sense, which is obviously not very close. We just disenchanted almost our entire collection just to get what we could, and we're already that low. Or that high, I should say, but it's going to take almost twice as much just to get one legendary. So first card that I think every new player should have back to the crafting here, is Azure Drake. 100 dust for one of the absolute best cards in the game. We're going to craft two of them right now. Yes, they are that good. Another card in the game that everyone should have at least one copy of is Acolyte of Pain. We already have one from our pack, so we're just going to hold on to the one for right now. Save that dust for anything else that might come up later. Another one that everyone should have in my top five neutrals is the Loot Hoarder. We've already got one of this guy as well. We might swing around and make a second copy of him. We'll see, but having just one is pretty good right now. It's a solid 2-1 body. You get to cycle a card, and it challenges your opponent's first main that they play as well in most cases. Next one is the one we were just talking about. 
that is the Bog Creeper. For right now, if you are a, a new player, Bog Creeper is an absolute auto-include must must craft card for almost any deck you make in these beginning phases of your new account. And for only 40 dust, that's a steal. I highly encourage you to make some Bog Creepers. Luckily, we already got two from our packs, so we're set to go with those guys. And the last one for my top five common and rare neutrals is the Earthen Ring Farseer. For only 40 dust, a nice mid-range card that you play out on turn three and potentially gain some health back. I love it. This guy is fantastic. We're going to put two of him into our collection right now. So we've also got, in, in my sort of tiering of cards, there's also a number of cards that we have for like the top five aggros, top five controls, mid-range, and then sort of spell slash miracle decks. I'm just going to list these off, and then we're going to go from there and, and actually build some decks around them. My top five aggro neutrals for like just any decks or any cards you could put in for typical aggro zoo face decks, Bilefin Tidehunter, Direwolf Alpha, Argent Squire, Knife Juggler, and Defender of Argus. Those are easily five of the best neutral, common, or rare cards you can find. And I believe all, let's see, I think Knife Juggler and Defender of Argus are the only two that are rare on here. The others are all commons. If you don't remember Balfin Tidehunter, that's the one that when you uh, play it, it also gives you a little 1-1 taunt. Fantastic card. This is also a pretty good card for mid-range in some cases to help you just defend something small. For control decks, my top fives for neutrals and commons and rares are North Sea Kraken, Frost Elemental, Mind Control Tech, Stampeding Kodo, and Sunwalker. And Sunwalker has been seeing a little more play lately in the free-to-play decks with, with our meta slowing down just a little bit in most cases. But I think Frost Elemental is one of the unsung heroes of cards that should see more play in budget decks. But for some reason, they just don't. And I really don't know why. It's a great card that helps stall the game a little bit and helps you control the board just a little more. Hence the name for control decks. For mid-range neutrals, commons, and rares, my top five are Refreshment Vendor, Flame Juggler, Cult Master, Dark Iron Dwarf, and Twilight Drake. Twilight Drake is also a great card if you're ever considering buying the Black Rock Mountain expansion and making a dragon deck of any kind, because right now you can't craft any of those cards, so you have to actually play or per you have to purchase the adventure itself to actually get those cards. But I think uh, Dark Iron Dwarf is a surprisingly good card in mid-range. Gives you a little plus two attack to help trade up on something. And it gives you a 4-4 body for four. And that's pretty good. One of my absolute favorites that helps new players is Cult Master as well. Cult Master is a card that, uh, if you don't remember, it's simply whenever one of your other minions dies, you draw a card. As long as Cult Master is on the board. And so this helps you promote like board presence, helps you think about turns ahead of what you're actually playing at the moment. We're going to go ahead and actually create one of these right now because I foresee us putting at least one into some of our decks today. And then for any sort of spell or miracle type decks, things that are very spell heavy, my top five neutrals for there for, for uh, commons and, and rares would be Violet Teacher, Wild Pyromancer, Frigid Snowbold, one of my favorite cards from TGT that no one plays, Gadget Sand Auctioneer, and if you're playing a secret deck, Secret Keeper is actually a fantastic neutral card to put into your deck. Right now, secrets are a little less prevalent in the game after the you know big backlash from the uh, Mysterious Challenger meta, Secret Paladin, but if you're playing a nice Trap Hunter deck or if you're playing a really low curve, high uh, card draw Secret Paladin deck, which can still be a deck, it still does work, uh, Secret Keeper is a fantastic card to put in there. So based on what we have here, I think we're going to make three different decks. We're going to try making today probably a Cthune Druid deck. We're going to try a nice mid-range Hunter deck, like slash Beast deck. And we're going to try a nice Tempo Pirate Warrior deck. Right now, those seem like three pretty unique decks. They're a little bit you know, different in each of their play styles. They're not all face decks. They're not all mid-range decks. They're not all control decks. And for right now, with what I have on this account, I'm thinking my middle three would be like a mage deck, a shaman deck, and a priest deck. Bottom three, as we mentioned earlier, are obviously going to be rogue, warlock, and paladin. So let's start by making our Cthune deck. Go to our new deck area over here. We're going to make a new deck for Druid. As you can see here, I've already got a few of these 
already leveled up to level 10 just in preparation for this episode so we weren't spending time grinding out stuff. We're going to make our own deck, custom deck. And we're going to make a Cthune deck. So the first thing, obviously, we're going to go to our search menu here and pretty much anything that has the word Cthune on it, we're going to add to our deck right away. So we've got Cthune himself, obviously. We'll put two Beckoners of Evil. We'll put one Doomcaller, so we only have the one. And I would say for right now, one Scarum Cultist should be fine. We've got two Dark Arakoas already, and so only one more six drop at the very most is what we'd want to see in this deck right now. Now let's see back to our cards we already have. Let's see what we have for our class cards. Innervate is a fantastic card for any sort of late game druid deck. We're going to toss two of those in there. Let's see, we've got, we'll pay at least one wild growth for right now to help with some ramp or some late game card draw. Two swipes, always good. Two mire keepers, also always good. And now let's see if there's any neutral cards we want, want to add on in here to help kind of keep our curve steady. Right now we're pretty lacking in three drops. Let's see what we can get in our three spot. One Acolyte of Pain, that seems fine. Let's put in some of our Earthen Ring Farseers. Let's see what's over here. Nothing really popping out on these ones or on these ones. Let's toss in one Cult Masters to help with our card draw. And that's a pretty good setup right now. Oh, plus two Azure Drakes. Definite, definite includes. We're going to probably add, be adding Azure Drakes to almost every single deck that we play today because they're just that good. And everything else, oh, plus Bog Creepers, filling out our seven curve. So it's actually a pretty nice deck so far. We've got 23 out of our 30 cards already. So now let's look at what the cards we want to, to create for Druid are initially. Here's my crafting priority for the first four Druid cards you should make. First one is Druid of the Claw. We're gonna go to crafting. We're gonna to go to our five slot here. And we're gonna make two of these right away because at 40 dust, they are a steal. Second one is Dark Arakoa. Even if you're not playing a Cthune deck, I would say Dark Arakoa is a fantastic card to put into any Druid deck that's not a token or aggro deck. Already got two of those, luckily, so we're going to just keep those right there. We're also going to want the card Wrath, which is one of the prime removal cards for any Druid deck. Get two of those. And we also want Living Roots. And we're also we're already kind of cutting pretty, pretty deep into our dust. So for right now, I'm gonna hold off on making living roots, and if we need to, we can come back later and uh, and, put, and craft one of those to put into our deck. So let's go ahead now, let's add the two wraths. Let's add the druid of the claws. What else did we make? We also made, I think that was pretty much it, wasn't it? So let's see what, how our curve looks right now. Right now, we've got a pretty nice curve, actually, but our three spot is still kind of lacking. So for right now, assuming we don't want to spend any more of our dust on anything, let's go ahead and we're just going to toss in one more Wild Growth to help with our ramp. We're going to toss in the card Feral Rage because we've got one. Use what you got. And then let's go ahead and let's toss in a Loot Hoarder, which we do already have. Oh, you know what actually we're going to put in? We're going to toss in the card Acidic Swamp Ooze. I highly encourage you, as a, as a new player, Acidic Swamp Ooze is one of the absolute best cards you can put in the game. Because if you're playing against a weapon class, you just simply hold on to it until your opponent plays a weapon. If you're playing against a non-weapon class, you just simply play it as a nice vanilla 2-mana 3-2 on the board on turn 2. And that's value right there. I'll take it. So to go through our full deck list now for our nice budget uh, custom druid deck here... Two Innervates, two Wild Growths, two Wraths, one Swamp Ooze, Acidic Swamp Ooze, two Beckoners of Evil, one Feral Rage, one Acolyte of Pain, two Earthen Ring Farseers, two Swipes, one Cult Master, one Klaxi Amber Weaver, two Mire Keepers, two Azure Drakes, two Druze of the Claw, two Dark Arcoas, one Scarum Cultist, two Bog Creepers, one Doomcaller, and one Cthune. For a budget deck, this is actually a pretty nice deck we have right here. Keep in mind that this is only from dust and from cards that we got free from the game. We have not spent a single cent on this, and all we've done so far is complete the quests that get you free packs for our stuff. This is right now a really nice deck. We're going to go ahead and call this one Budget Cthoon. Beautiful. I love it. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our next one. Our next new deck we're going to make is going to be a sort of mid-range beast hunter deck. Thanks to, to especially to those uh, those two Savannah high mains we got, this could be a very, very nice deck to build right here. So, 
let's go ahead and start here. Uh, we're going to toss in the two Savannah High Mains, obviously. We're going to toss in two Hound Masters, two Kill Commands, all fantastic cards. We've got two Fiery Bats already, two Animal Companions, a Carrion Grub. Let's go ahead and toss in one Hunter's Mark. Eh, it's like a two just to be safe. Two Hunter's Marks, the Freezing Trap will toss in as well. And right now that brings us to a pretty good set with our class cards. Let's look now at the neutrals. Let's go ahead and since this will be a somewhat fast paced, somewhat more pressure uh, motivated deck, we're going to toss in some of our low curve cards like Argent Squire we're going to toss in there. Let's go ahead and get in at least one Swamp Ooze. Since we are still on a free account, there's no shame in putting in River Crocolisks. because they are beasts so we do get some synergy from those guys right there. We're going to toss in one of these Loot Hoarders as well, Acolyte of Pain. Earthen Ring Farseer is not as big of a card to put in this deck, but I do think having at least one will be good for now, so let's toss one of those in here. Let's see, we're looking for some more, let's see, let's look at some four drops. Cult Master, fantastic card. Let's go ahead and get in those two Azure Drakes. And let's see, looking for more low curve cards. For a deck like this, we're typically not going to have anything past six. And right now with our curve, we could use a couple more twos, a couple more fours, maybe one or more, uh, one or two more five drops. And you know what, actually Bog Creeper, I'm going to toss one of the Bog Creepers into this deck, because that's a pretty good card. So we've got a pretty decent curve so far, pretty decent deck right now. We're missing five cards still from a full deck. Here are my suggestions for your top crafting priorities for Hunter. The first one is going to be the card Unleash the Hounds. This is a nice common card that's great against zoo matchups and also provides some beasts and some late game push, so to say. We're going to go ahead and make two copies of those guys. We're also going to want one of the best weapons in the game, the Eagle Horn Bow. Since we are running low on dust, we're going to make just one of these right now. That's a great card to add. My other suggestions for great crafting priorities, Deadly Shot, let's make one of those, and the Savannah High Mains, which luckily we already have two of. So now with those new cards we just made, let's go ahead and add those to our deck. We got one Deadly Shot, one Eagle Horn Bow, We've also got the two Unleash the Hounds. We need one more card. We're going to try and preserve our dust for right now. Let's go ahead and add a copy of Multi Shot just for some nice, typical, uh, you know, just, just nice standard removal spells. So, with our Hunter deck here, let's go ahead and just simply call this Budget Mid Range. Yeah, not bad. For, as you can see here on the curve, uh, for those of you just listening to the audio version of this, right now our curve for the one drop, we got five cards. For the two drop, five cards. For the three drop, we've got 11 cards in this deck. And then we've got from four to seven, four, two, two, and one cards. Hunter is a deck in a class that is going to naturally bulge in the three drop slot, much like how uh, Paladin has a very uh, like bulgy curve in the four drop slot because they have so many good cards in that slot area right there. And so this is okay, but in an ideal world, we'd have a few fewer on the threes and a few more on twos and fours. But for right now, not bad. I can dig it. Cool. So that's our budget mid-range deck. And let's make one more here. We've got, I think, a pretty solid start with the cards we got for free from making a warrior deck. So let's go ahead and make a nice custom sort of a, a tempo-ish warrior deck. All right, so first things first. Obviously, we're going to want some executes. Toss those in there. We've got two copies of Nazoth's first mate already, which is fantastic. I'm going to say at least one copy of Whirlwind for now. We might come back and add a second one, but having Whirlwind effects will synergize greatly with some of our other cards. Let's see. Uh, Fiery War Axe is a must-have. Slam is a great card to put in there. The two Blood Cell Cultists are fantastic. Frothing Berserker, Ravaging Ghouls, Corcoran Elites, all fantastic. And let's see, let's go ahead and add one Shield Block just to get some card draw in there. And since we are playing a more heavy face deck with this one, let's add one Arcanite Reaper. Now already I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, there are quite a few Warrior cards in the common and rare slots that I'm probably going to want for this deck. Inner Rage, Battle Rage, fantastic cards. Cool Taskmaster, maybe. Bash is definitely a good card to have for these first decks. And I would love to have a second Frothing Berserker. So seeing what I have right now, I'm going to make the call already. We're going to go ahead and we're going to... Wait one second here. 
Can I actually craft another class's card while I'm in this class's card? I don't think I can. What we're gonna do, let's go back for a second. Do not wanna finish automatically. We're gonna go ahead and toss Forbidden Shaping. We're gonna disenchant this card just to turn it into one more frothing berserker. So let's go back to our actual warrior deck now. And we're gonna make a second copy of this guy to put into our deck. Perfect. We've got 70 dust remaining. Card draw is always good. So let's go ahead and put in our search thing here, draw. Battle Rage, at least one, is a great card for the style of deck. Done with crafting, let's add that to our deck. Two Azure Drakes, fantastic. These also play in well with cards like Whirlwind and cards like Slam. Let's go ahead and add in one Acolyte of Pain, one Cult Master, the Loot Hoarder. Let's see how Curve's looking so far. We've got six cards to go. And right now we've got a lot of early game, but we don't really have anything in the six or seven slot. To be honest, pretty much everything from four up is pretty, pretty low right now. So let's go ahead. We're gonna add in some of our late game cards to this deck. We're gonna first add in, ooh, Gurubashi Berserker. I think it's a fantastic free, it's a, it's a totally base free card to add to this deck. We'll get two of those in there. Let's go ahead and get two copies of our Bog Creeper in there. And we're still two cards shy from a full deck. What can we put in here? Heroic Strike, you think, maybe? maybe another Whirlwind, perhaps? Another Shield Lock? Another Reaper? Reaper's not a bad idea, actually. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's add another two drop. Let's add an Aesthetic Swamp Ooze to the deck. And let's go ahead and, oh, wait a minute. Hold tight, I think we might have to take one of these cards out. Let's toss one of the Shield Locks, or the only Shield Lock. Let's put in two Aberrant Berserkers to help with our four slot. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now our, our curve is from one through seven, we've got five, six, seven, five, five, zero, and two. And that is actually a pretty nice curve. So we're gonna go ahead and call this one up here. We're gonna call this our Budget Tempo Warrior. Perfect. So already, just by using the cards that the game already gave us, we've got three nice, solid decks that you can play. And I would honestly say that all three of these, with a few tweaks here and there, you could easily get to rank 15 with these. Rank 10 with good gameplay and a little bit of luck, I think you could make it happen. And then anything beyond that might need some more tweaking. But these decks, as they are right now, are actually pretty solid, if you ask me. Like These are actually pretty close to what you'll see from the standard versions. The only differences are we don't have any legendaries and we don't have any epics in any of these decks. But hey, that's okay, you're making new decks. Don't go for spending a lot of your dust on a lot of the cards that look really nice and shiny and ooh, I want that card really badly. You know, that's, that's not your priority right now when you're making a new deck on a brand new account. So now we've made our three decks, I'm gonna go through some of my other crafting priorities. Let's say that you found some cards in your first packs that really go towards some other classes. Let's say that you found some great stuff for making a mage deck, or some great stuff for making a really strong, like Reno-ish, sort of mid-rangey uh, Warlock deck. Obviously, look into making, or look into purchasing some of the, the adventure wings, adventure sets from the game. I think League of, League of Explorers, I think is a little more, uh, uh, I guess cost effective. You get more for your money when you purchase League of Explorers. But if you want to make any sort of dragon deck or any sort of combo centric Emperor Thorason or Grim Patron deck, obviously Black Rock Mountain is the way to go. But here's my uh, my suggestions for the other classes. If you're playing Rogue, you're gonna want SI7 Agent. Oh, hang on a second. Let me get my. There we go. You're gonna want SI7 Agent. You're going to want. Uh, Undercity Huckster, you're going to want Eviscerate, and you're going to want Shadow Strike. Although I will say if you're playing Rogue and you're playing any sort of spell-based version of it, Preparation, which is an epic spell, is going to be one of your high crafting priorities. But that's why I usually say don't craft uh, or don't, don't go for Rogue your first time. It'll be a very frustrating class to play for most new players. For Mage, I say Mana Worm, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Spell Slinger, and Faceless Summoner are all fantastic crafting priorities. Most of your, of your best spells are base spells, so you're good to go with those regardless. 
For Paladin, I say Aldor Peacekeeper, Murloc Knight, Equality, and Seal of Champions are going to be some crafting priorities. For Priest, Flash Heal, Circle of Healing, Akanai Soul Priest, and Holy Champion are great cards to add in for your first deck. For Shaman, we've got Lightning Storm, we've got Thing from Below, we've got Tuskar Totemic and Thunderbluff Valiant, all great cards to start with. For Warlock, Siphon Soul, Power Overwhelming, Shadow Flame, and Flame Imp, all fantastic, fantastic cards. And for Warrior, which we actually got quite a these, bit of these already, I would say Ravaging Ghoul, Bloodhoof Brave, Bash, and Battle Rage are some of your most, uh, most high priority cards to craft on any sort of new account. So, uh, as we as we were talking about these decks, you may ask, okay, well, why not doing priest and why not doing uh, rogue? I mentioned earlier, rogue, as we just said, is a very finicky and a very high level pl- uh, deck to play. And you sure you can play a nice mid range version of it that just has typical minions coming out on curve and play out and have a have a decent deck with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But to get a really good flavor for what Rogue is, it is unfortunately a fairly expensive deck and a fairly tough deck to play as well. Ask anyone in the game, they'll tell you that Rogue is one of the most high uh, high like uh, uh, skill level decks to play. And to be honest, I'm not very good at Rogue myself. I would never advise any first time player to play uh, an actual Rogue deck. Priest and any sort of control deck, like Control Warrior, Control Priest, those are the kind of decks that when you're a new player, you honestly don't have the background experience or the knowledge of the game to properly control it well. You don't know what to expect from your opponents. You don't know how to properly use your removals, when to save a removal spell and not just spend it on something that's played right away. And so any sort of control deck, I would wait a few weeks or months into playing the game before you really try and dive into a true control deck. Knowing when to use certain removal spells, knowing how to properly trade on the board. These are all things that are pretty high level skill uh, caps, so to say, and simply not for the, the beginning player, in all honesty. I remember I tried making a control deck when I first started playing the game. I made a control mage deck, and it was not very good. I struggled to reach rank 17 with it when I first started playing the game two years ago. And then I switched to a more mid-range deck and had much more success, a much much more high, much higher win rate with that one instead. So this will do it for this week's episode of the Cygnus Guide to Deck Building. If you're a new player and you want some advice, some tips on how to make your first decks, please, please, please don't hesitate to contact me. This has been your host, Cygnus. You can contact me at cgdpodcast at gmail.com. I'm going to go ahead and post all three of these decks on hearthpone.com as well. I'll probably put the uh, some sort of uh, like a, a, a moniker or a little acronym before it to say like CGD Podcast, Budget Cthune, Budget Midrange, and Budget Tempo for all of these decks. Obviously, these are all simply suggestions for what you can make if you want a nice, viable deck with what you've got just from naturally playing the game in just your first week. As I said earlier, I made these decks in just a matter of a few days of playing the game and winning with a a fairly high win rate in the very low ranks from 25 up to about 18, I think I played, to get my, my quests done. But obviously... Make whatever decks you want to play. If there's a really cool synergy you saw on YouTube or a really great concept you saw somewhere and you want to devote the resources to making that deck, go for it, obviously. This was just simply a a guide to help people who don't want to put any money into the game and have started a new account with what kind of deck do I want to make. Just make sure you focus on what cards you already have in the game. Use your dust accordingly and don't be afraid to disenchant some cards that you'll likely never actually use anytime soon in the game. But until then, as I said earlier, you can contact me at cgdpodcast at gmail.com. I've been your host, Cygnus. Hope you guys have a great time. Hope you guys have an enjoyable time with this episode. And until next time, happy deck building. Happy deck building.